In 2021, Russia was the largest net exporter of gas and oil in the world. Yet a series of strategic blunders has seen its status slip away. Its high-risk gamble to gut gas supplies to Europe is backfiring and Russia has been left with gas it can't sell. But for the Russian economy, it gets even worse as the EU oil embargo and falling global oil prices cause a further decline in export revenue. Yet, despite the good news of falling gas prices, we will also look at why there is still a real danger Europe could become too complacent again. Back in early 2022, things looked very different. Years of energy complacency had left Europe dependent on Russian imports. 46% of European natural gas, a key component of industry, was imported directly from Russia. And then in the summer of 2022, Russia started to dramatically cut back supplies of natural gas to Europe. As a consequence, prices soared to record levels, nearly 10 times the pre-war level. And despite selling 75% less gas, Russian revenues were initially unaffected due to the very high prices. And in Europe, this gas crunch caused a real inflation shock, with inflation of 10%, the first time in decades. The hope of Putin was that such economic pain would be unsustainable for Western Europe. However, this hasn't happened. Firstly, as politicians often forget, economics is not everything. True, people don't like higher prices, but generally public opinion accepted the necessity of sanctions on Russia. But now it is economics which is also turning against Russia. In the middle of winter, gas prices have unexpectedly fallen to pre-war levels. Gas future prices are actually trading at a lower level than pre-March 2022. The consequence is that Russian fossil fuel earnings have de declined 40% since earlier in the year. And this will be a big blow for a government where 45% of tax revenues come from oil and gas. Why has Putin's energy gamble appeared to fail? Well, firstly, Europe has achieved a spectacular decline in gas consumption. A 20% fall is a very significant achievement. This has occurred through efficiencies, switching to alternatives, turning down the heating. US exports of LNG have almost entirely replaced Russian gas. Secondly, the higher gas prices have made gas production more profitable around the world, contributing to a surge in supply. Supply of gas rose 20% in 2022, compensating to a large extent for the loss of Russian supply. Thirdly, Putin made ongoing threats to cook gas throughout early 2022. It meant that when gas flows were eventually reduced later in the year, Europe was ready. Now, even in the middle of winter, EU gas reserves are at a very healthy level of 81% full. And this is all a far cry from earlier fears that Europe may have to ration gas, which would cause a devastating recession. But even more important for Russia is the EU embargo on Russian oil, because it is oil that accounts for the biggest share of Russian tax revenue. Now, firstly, due to the global recession, oil prices have fallen a long way since the peaks of summer. Secondly, the EU oil embargo has so far been quite effective in reducing the price of Russian oil. Back in March 2022, oil prices surged 40% in just two weeks on fears that Russian supply would be cut. But now, threats to cut Russian supply barely register a ripple on global oil markets. Last December, Russian Prime Minister Alexander Novak warned Russia may cut output by 700,000 barrels a day, but it had barely no effect on oil prices. Oil prices are now lower than pre-February 2022. Russia could once move oil prices, but amidst a global downturn, it has lost this ability. Now it is true that because of the EU embargo, Russia has pivoted to selling oil to China and India, but it is finding that these Asian countries to be very hard negotiators Reuters estimates that Russian oil is trading at a discount of 32 
to $35 per barrel. With global prices only around $80, Russian producers are struggling to meet their own costs of production. Given that they have one of the highest costs of, costs of production, $44 in the world. The high prices of oil in 2022 have also created an incentive for other countries around the world to increase supply. We are seeing an extra 4 million barrels a day coming from producers such as the United States, Venezuela, Canada and Brazil. This is not to say that Russian gas cuts had no effect. They did cause record inflation, falling real wages and major economic disruption. But this economic shock is increasingly looking short term and nothing like enough to make Europe change policy. You could also say that another short term cost to Putin's energy blackmail is a resurgence in coal burning. Germany has been controversially expanding coal power stations, the biggest cause of global warming. Yet this reliance on coal is likely to prove temporary just to get through the current crisis. The bigger long term effect is a surge in the determination to build renewable energy. You can see here how Germany has been successful weaning itself away from Russian energy and increasing the share of renewables. It is quite possible that 2022 was peak fossil fuel and Putin's own energy gamble ironically played a role in moving the world to domestically sourced renewable energy. However, before Europe declares victory in the energy war, there's still a real danger of falling into the same complacent trap which left Europe dependent on Putin in the first place. You could argue Europe was lucky to get a mild winter and a global slowdown, especially in China, the biggest source of energy. Also, the very generous price limits set by governments are distorting incentives and discouraging people from insulating their homes and reducing demand, especially in a country like the UK, where demand has fallen by less than Europe. Now, should the global economy recover, and if we get a return of cold weather, Europe can be squeezed again. However, even this needs evaluation. China has bought relatively little gas from Russia, preferring to tap domestic supplies and invest in massive offshore wind farms. India is forecast to grow strongly and is definitely benefiting from cut price Russian oil. But even this new market in India fails to compensate for the loss of European consumers. What does it all mean for Russia? Russian energy firms are facing existential crisis as it loses markets in Europe but fails to gain real viable alternatives. Europe has turned its back on Russian energy and will never return. This loss of its the biggest consumer will hit GDP and tax revenues hard for years to come. And facing a raft of economic sanctions, there's no easy option for a Russian economy reliant on the export of primary products. But whatever happens to the Russian economy, it is increasingly likely that they have permanently lost the ability to spook markets with devastating price increases. The threat to cut off gas is, is more like a one-off economic weapon that can't be easily reused. I hope you found this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and uh, see you soon.